Can you hear me? Hey everybody, welcome to Adam Makes Beer. My name is Adam and today we are going to be doing one of our first rounds of cell counting. I was kind of unsure about recording this stuff this early in the process for us, but I was talking to the staff and I just figure I'm going to show you where we're at with it and what we're doing. If anything, it'll be something that I can go back to re-record if we make changes to the process. So if you're a lab whiz and you see us doing something wrong, don't hate me too much. Leave a comment. I busted through my glove. That's how excited I am about today's cell counting. Leave comments, different things like that. I'm learning, you're learning, we're all learning. First of all, amazing, uh, the amazing Maggie typed up a fantastic SOP for what we're doing with our yeast process, uh, our, our cell counting process right now. I'm basing all of, this whole SOP is really built off of the videos that Imperial Yeast has put up within the past year on this whole process. So you should definitely check those videos out. I'll try to link in the description, all that stuff. Hopefully I remember. We're gonna go through this and, and, and I'm gonna kind of show you everything that we're doing. Really what we wanna set up first here is, is we want to have obviously our microscope. Yeah. I might wanna be upgrading that with a camera at some point, but we'll get to that. Our test tubes, our water our jars that we're going to be harvesting with. Um, we have the cool little pipette gun that goes with, with these little ones. I also have my little test tubes. They're called test tubes, right? Test tubes. And also these little cheapo pipettes. That's pretty much what we're using. I have my hydrometer here. Hydrometer. No. <laughs> it is my hemocytometer. I have that here and I have a little cover slip that goes over that. That's kind of most of the gear. One thing that I did off camera was I did dilute my methylene blue. Um, that's how we're gonna be staining for viability testing. You can see, you can kind of pull light through it. It's not uh, super dark. So we have that. We're gonna start running through this whole thing. I'm gonna blow a little yeast off the bottom of the tank and then I'm gonna start harvesting from there. Uh, I'm going to harvest what we're going to be counting today. I'm going to use the calculator on imperialyeast.com in order to take that cell count that I'm going to take and take that up through the calculator so I know how many pounds I need to be harvesting off my tank today. Again, what we're doing isn't perfect, but we're going to get better and we're going to get there. It's a starting point, right? So anyhow, any, anyhow, anyhow. Yeah, let's get started. All right, so the next step is my mic on, yay. Okay, so our next step is I need to dump some of the bottom portion of the cone, all of that dead yeast, little extra tube that's in there, all the things I don't wanna be repitching, right? I don't wanna be repitching the first yeast to flock out, the dead yeast, all that stuff. So I'll blow a couple of gallons out of a little dump rig here. All of this has been sanitized. And so just real easily, I'll bleed this through here. And I can see that this has already gone real nice, kind of fluffy and creamy. This is Harvest, the lager strain from Imperial that I absolutely love. This is one of the things that I love it for, how easy it is to work with. And you, I can feel this. I have 10 PSI on the tank. And so when I feather this valve right here a little bit, I can feel that going through the valve. And so just real slowly, I'm feathering that stuff into this bucket here. And I'm dumping off the bottom of this cone so I can start harvesting some yeast out of the middle of the yeast cake where I really wanna be harvesting yeast from. You can see inside this blow off bucket where I'm just roughly taking the volume of yeast again two to three gallons is what I need to be blowing off of this in order to have it be where I want it to be for harvesting. All right, now, I have this, this little racking arm from our, the spike tank that we have. It's gonna make it a little easier to, to harvest the yeast that I'm gonna be doing the cell count with into this sweet little container. I'm gonna fill this about halfway up, just so I know um, it's, it's maybe overkill. But one of my feelings is, is I think they said to harvest uh, a, a few hundred a few hundred grams of yeast. 
you don't need that much, but maybe it's to make sure that you kind of have a more representative sample, something like that. Anyhow, that's what we're gonna do. Um, I am gonna blow a little yeast through onto the floor to wash any ISO out because I don't wanna be killing cells that are going into this. So let's do that. Just watch me pour a little out for all the brewing homies. You're free. The cool thing about this is you can actually see how foamy and nice this sample is. You get a nice fluffy sample. It almost looks like a, like a thinner bread dough. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull my yeast sample off this. Again, I'm feathering this handle. I don't want to be dumping a ton of yeast in here. I have it about a third full right now. I'm gonna go a little bit more. Boom. All right, I've got my sample right here. I'm gonna put my cap on loosely. This, this harvesting vessel is not sanitized, by the way. It's clean, it's dry, but remember, we're gonna be doing cell counting, viability testing. If this thing is full of iodine, ISO, anything like that, you're gonna be killing cells. So clean, not sanitized, and again, nothing's coming into play here. None of this stuff is going to touch beer. That's really all we need to be doing for it. We're gonna go over and create our first dilution and get ready to start counting up these cells. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is, according to my instructions, I'm gonna take my beaker, I'm gonna put it on the scale, I'm gonna turn that on, so it's essentially torn for this, it'll be at zero, and I need five mils or grams of yeast. So I'm gonna use, which apparently Josh doesn't like it when I call it the quick and dirty boy, but this is the cheap uh, throwaway one. This is what I'm gonna be using for this or as Josh likes to call it, the quick and dirty boy. I'm gonna swirl this up a little bit to try to get a representative sample in case it wanted to separate out a little bit. Josh is back here yammering right now, just so you know. This is fluffy and it's not easy for me to pull a sample on. If I have to resort to the fancy one that we have, I will, but we'll see. I'll try to fast forward this if we need to. All right, we got three grams. I need to go up to five, four grams, five grams. Now my SOP says, with the fancy milliliter measuring device, we have this sweet little uh, pipette pump. Add 245 grams of water to the beaker to make the total weight on the scale read 250. So I have some tap water as recommended on the Imperial stuff. And I'm gonna do just a quick and dirty pour here. Quick and dirty might be the term I'm reusing over and over today. And when I get close to 250, I'm going to resort to my pipette pump. What if I have the perfect pour on water here? Okay, so this says 244 grams. This means that I need six mils of water. We may have had the perfect pump here. This has a little dial where you can dial in the exact amount that you need. If I don't learn how to flip this video around, don't hate me. Boom. I almost had the exact amount of water I needed in here. Now, dilution is now one to 50. So I'm gonna be cutting this again. If this is a high flocculating strain, it says you may need to stir. And I will actually do that with another one of the cheap ones here. Harvest is a fairly, a fairly flocculent strain. So before I sample out of this, you'll see me stir this again and make sure that I don't see a ton of stuff settled out in the bottom and everything like that. Kim wipes. Kim wipes are just fancy tissues. All right, now the next stage is, is we are going to create our next dilution, which is going to take us from one to 50 to one to 500, and that's where we're going to count for right now. No, actually, we're gonna be diluting with methylene blue. Let's go back. Right now, we have our one to 50 dilution. We're gonna be creating a one to 500 dilution in one of our test tubes. So in order to do that, I need nine milliliters of tap water, and then we're going to add one milliliter of the one to 50 dilution to that. Okay, dropping right in here. Quick note, if you're using the gradations on this, I would recommend you actually weighing one of these with the cap on, on the scale, tearing it, and then measuring out specific amounts of water, and then seeing how many grams of it. One mil of water is one gram. You might be surprised how off these numbers, or maybe you're not surprised, but anyways, pro tip. So I have my nine mils in here, 
And I'm gonna drop this tip, which I will use again in a little bit. And I'm going to grab another one and I'm going to pull my yeast sample off of this. I have my nine mils in the test tube and I'm going to add one mil of this dilution to our test tube. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Drop that in here. This is our dilution. We're gonna put the cap on. All right, so this is our next dilution and then we're gonna pull out of this and then we're gonna mix it with our methylene blue and that's gonna be our final dilution. Because this is now a one to 500, I'm gonna pull two mils of this and two mils of my methylene blue and then that's gonna give me a one to 1,000 and that's what I'm going to count off of. All right, I'm gonna make sure this is turned over well. I'm gonna drop this tip, use a new one, a different one, I should say. All right, take it up to two mils. I'm gonna turn both these over to make sure that they're both fully mixed. I'm gonna pour my, pull my yeast first. That's gonna go right into this one right next to it. I'm gonna drop that straight in without letting it touch the sides. I'm gonna drop that and I'm gonna take my methylene blue. Two mils, again, turn that over. Then this is gonna make the rest of our dilution. Makes it nice and pretty. Gonna dump this off, cap everything back up. Then this one to 1,000 yeast sample right here is going to be what I count off of. I was listening to some stuff and they said that you do wanna give this a couple of minutes to allow the whole dyeing process to, to work appropriately before you start counting. But honestly, by the time I get fully set up with my microscope, that's really going to be fine. I am gonna take all these small things that you saw over here. I'm not gonna throw those out. I'm gonna give them a quick, quick rinse just so nothing stains on as far as the dye or anything and then I will clean them later. We're gonna go ahead and set up for our count. All right, so I am gonna be using my hemocytometer and this is gonna be really hard to see but there is a small little, ooh, reflection. Small little cover slip that I'm gonna be putting over this. What I want to be doing here is I'm going to get this cover slip on here and there's these two little channels you can see. Here's, here's one of them. I'm going to put this cover slip on and then I'm going to use a disposable pipette and I'm just going to let a little drop feed into this. And when that cover slip is on there, what is, is it capillary effect? Capillary action. Capillary action. Uh, we're gonna drop that on there and then it's just gonna cover the whole thing. You don't wanna slop a lot of liquid all over the top of that. I have done that before and a little bit of liquid will get on top of the cover slip. I do just try to dab that up a little bit with, uh, with the Kim wipe if need, uh, if need be. But anyways, you do wanna make sure this is well cleaned, dry, everything like that. And then we will be getting our yeast sample on here momentarily. All right, I'm gonna give my one to a thousand dilution, one more turnover to make sure that this sample that I'm gonna pull is representative. I'm gonna pull a small amount out here and then very carefully, I'm gonna try to drop just one drop in there. I think I did a pretty good job. We'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. I think I'm gonna need a Kimberly wipe. Just a little dot on top. But I'm gonna get in here and I'm going to count these cells. hey -oh. I can see things. Viability is way better. Balla balla. Oh, look out, boy. I said, I said, look out, boy. I need, I need to post on Instagram. Is that what that is? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's already made. I just need to post it. <laughs> this sample is way better. This is, this is cool. Only three? Yeah. I got 50 live cells, and I, I counted the portion of the square. It's like the five on the dice, the four outside in the middle. So yeah, we got over 94% viability with this. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna crunch these numbers up and put them through a calculator, and that will help show us what we need to end up pitching for this beer that we're doing today. Sweet. And yeah, and so I'm not sure if I messed up like the calculator, I picked, it said desired, uh, desired cells, and we went with uh, a million cells per mil per degree Play-Doh. 
Okay, so I have to tell you, and I'm not joking, that I, I, we talk about them all the time, but Imperio really is great. I just got off the phone with Alec. I put all of the numbers that we got through this whole thing through their calculator, and it wasn't making sense to me the numbers I was getting. The calculator recommended taking close to 14 pounds of yeast for this pitch right here. Normally, I would be doing 4.4 pounds of yeast per barrel, and so there's, there's a big difference. This is like three times less. And we kind of talked it through, and really, I ultimately have a, a really high density slurry here that, that, I am, that I'm harvesting. I have a great viability rate. Um, I am 94, 95% viability, meaning that 95% of the cells that I'm counting are live. And it was a really clean sample count too. Everything was just super clear. I was really pleased with that. And so we kind of talked it out and, and, and what we decided on is, is we're gonna kind of hit a middle range, not doing the 13 pounds, not doing the 45 pounds that I usually do, but we're gonna run that, we're gonna run this at about 25 pounds plus the volume of yeast that is inside of the 10 foot transfer hose that we use to get that yeast into the brink. We have that stuff harvested up and we're gonna, we're gonna run this. I, I'm kind of excited to, to see how it goes. To me, this is one of the things that's really exciting with getting into new things, trying out new techniques. Uh, to be honest, for me, this is really pushing me. This is not like, I don't feel like this is my wheelhouse and so I feel a little weird and a little uncomfortable when I, when I work on some of these things, but it's really good. It, it keeps you growing and, and again, it, it's, it's always about adding more skills to your tool belt as, as a brewer. If you have any questions about anything you saw us do today, let me know, leave them in the comments below. Please consider sharing this content with beer loving, brewer loving, brewery loving people in your life, and yeah, sounds good.